Coming up on this week in Torrance, we'll tell you about an emergency system designed to help the hearing impaired during an emergency. The Torrance Animal Control offered a unique clinic to ensure all pets and pet owners are up to date on licenses and vaccines. Plus, flu season is here. We'll tell you what authorities are saying about the flu vaccine. And an opportunity to inspire young girls in the field of science and math. These stories and much more just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. Jen Chun has the week off. Thanks so much for joining us. Here are your top stories. El Camino College joins community colleges across California to raise awareness and provide support and resources to undocumented students. During the week of October 14th through the 18th, Undocumented Student Week of Action will take place to advocate for students. A full week of activities are scheduled with students, faculty, and staff invited to participate. This campaign also serves as an opportunity to highlight the challenges undocumented students face in today's current climate, while also advocating for Congress to take legislative action on important federal policies. The college's Undocumented Student Task Force, which was established in 2016, coordinates campus efforts and provides information for students who need assistance. Students can also receive on-campus help with DREAM Act applications and financial aid. You can learn more about the scheduled activities throughout the week at elcamino.edu. Well, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says the flu season may pick up sooner than traditionally forecast. The CDC recommends getting a flu vaccine before the end of the month. If possible, doctors say to try and get the vaccine before the Thanksgiving holiday when more people travel and are exposed to more germs. The vaccine typically takes about two weeks to build up immunity once you get the shot. For the 2018 to 2019 flu season, which started last October and ended this May, the CDC estimated nearly 42.9 million cases of the flu and up to 647,000 patients that were hospitalized. They also counted nearly 61,000 flu-related deaths. While it wasn't a typical flu season, it was the record-breaking longest flu season in the past 10 years. Health experts say children six months and older, pregnant women, and the elderly are the most vulnerable and should get a vaccine by the end of October. There are ways to avoid getting sick. Wash your hands frequently. Avoid friends and family members who are sick. And if you do get sick yourself, stay home from work or school. You can get more information at cdc.gov flu. Torch could make the cut in Hollywood once again. While many already know that scenes from popular TV shows like Beverly Hills 90210, 90210 and Buffy, or 9210 as some people say, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer were shot here in Torrance, did you know movies like Bruce Almighty, The Longest Yard, Horrible Bosses, Scarface, and Boogie Nights also had scenes shot right here in the city? Well, Torrance has provided the backdrop to more than 200 movies and television series episodes, and according to the Torrance Economic Development Department, a new Netflix original series may be looking to film here as well. The subscription-based streaming service has more than 148 million paid subscriptions worldwide, including 60 million here in the United States. A local park now has smoother pathways for its visitors. The Public Works Department recently completed these improvements at Sur La Brea Park, located in the southeast area of Torrance. Upgrades include new asphalt base and slurry sealing of the pathways. The next step is to install a new playground and fitness equipment in November. The park special features uh, the La Casita community building. It also has a softball diamond, basketball, and tennis courts. Sur La Brea Park is located at Cabrillo, on Cabrillo Avenue between 236th Street and 237th Street. Well, the legacy of former assistant city manager Mary Giordano continues thanks to a new scholarship fund created in her honor. In memory of Ms. Giordano, the Leadership Development Scholarship Fund was designed to help employees pay for professional and leadership development conferences and training. Giordano's legacy encourages individuals in public service 
to bridge the gap through enrichment of gender and social equity. This scholarship allows for that access and opportunity, which they might not have otherwise. Current full-time staff are encouraged to apply. Applicants must submit a one-page minimum essay illustrating the importance of professional development and leadership and how it will promote public service. Funds may be used to support training, attend seminars, and pay for conference-related fees. To apply, submit your essay to the City of Torrance, Office of the City Manager, 3031 Torrance Boulevard, Torrance, 90503. Attention, Mary Giordano Scholarship. Well, still ahead, a local teacher gets a top honor. We'll tell you why, plus Torrance police and fire chiefs speak at a local event. We'll take you there. We'll be back in just a minute. Don't go away. Palm trees, coastline, craft brews. Yep, this is Southern California, but this is Torrance. Have you ever driven to a whole other city just for a bowl of ramen? Because if you haven't, that's about to change. Have you ever been to a beach that feels so much like your own private beach that you're like, where has this been all my life? Welcome, my friends, to Torrance Beach. So private, you hadn't even heard of it. Have you ever been to a mall that had literally 2.7 million square feet of shopping? Run, don't walk to Del Amo Fashion Center. And get this, Torrance is the actual epicenter of the South Bay's craft brew industry. I guess you could say the brews are just craftier here. We also have a farmer's market that's just as much about the people as it is about the food. And even our museum scene is the best of the South Bay. All this, just 15 minutes from LAX. You'll come for the city, stay for the experience, and leave as a friend. So, are you in? The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce invited the community to their first installment of their Vision Makers series. Attendees were treated to breakfast at the Doubletree Hotel as they heard inspirational speeches by local leaders. The series kicked off with guest speakers Torrance Fire Chief Martin Cerna and Torrance Police Chief Eve Irvine. Chamber President Donna Duperon encourages business members to engage and learn from this series. What we're looking for really is an opportunity for our businesses to hear firsthand what is going on in the police and fire departments, how we as a business community can partner with them on different activities or events that they are doing, and just overall uh, becoming good partners with them. Both speakers discuss strategic planning, technology, and how to make a difference in the community. Chief Cerna compared the past to how he plans to move forward into a new decade. And Chief Irvine discussed cyber and physical security tips for businesses. I went to a conference uh, in July. And again, always looking for ideas and how to better improve. Uh, a vendor showed these, these extinguisher balls. And I know 10 years ago, 12 years ago, someone came to council and had an idea about... Uh, extinguisher balls, um, and I was like, oh, Mr. Jackson told me to look into these, and I saw them. But I bring this up because, again, stat challenging the status quo. It, these little balls have the ability to put out fire by just tossing them into uh, a situation, and they're flame uh, activated. We came back and I shared it with these guys. They almost laughed at me like, Chief, well, now, what are you, now what are you bringing back? <laughs> so they call them the Harry Potter balls. I wanted to share that with you because again, thinking outside the box and challenging the status quo is incredibly important, not only for our organization, but for your organization for survivability. Please know that the Torrance Police Department, your police department here is completely committed and dedicated to our working relationship and our partnership um, on serving you in our community. For more information on the next installment of the Vision Maker series, check out torrancechamber.com. There's a new emergency system being implemented here at Torrance Beach designed to assist the deaf and hard of hearing. Colleen Farrell reports on a new notification system designed to make the beach safer for all. Recreating on the beach is a Southern California pastime many locals take for granted. But a recent survey conducted by the Los Angeles County Department of Beaches and Harbors discovered a segment of the population with a very different correlation with Southern California's coastline. For the deaf and hearing impaired, 
the beach is often associated with fear. You have to imagine that from their perspective, if the lifeguards were going around and telling everybody, get off the beach and everybody's running, the confusion that they're experiencing in that moment. Safety officer Randy Dean has experienced the world of the hearing impaired through his two children who wear hearing aids. As part of the county's yearly risk management plan, he commissioned a survey of more than 500 members of the deaf community. It confirmed his suspicions about barriers to visiting the beach. This is only a test. The survey results prompted development of a system to assist in emergency situations that require immediate evacuation. Such events include tsunami warnings, shark sightings, or terrorist attacks. We were about 100 yards out past the buoy, so we're about 340 yards out. And in the water, when the alarm went off, through the head underwater, you could still hear the alarm. The city of Torrance tested out various speakers for the new system, monitoring the distances at which they were heard. Esto es solo una prueba. The system will trigger strobe lighting and bilingual audio messages for those on the beach and in the water. This frees lifeguards to focus on managing the emergency. Right now, if there's an emergency and the lifeguards need to uh, evacuate the beach or evacuate the water, they have to drive up and down the beach for hundreds of miles to notify them with PA systems. With this system, uh, they can do it at a central location and they can isolate a section of beach or a larger section of beach, depending what the need is. Torrance Beach was selected to launch the new audio and lighting initiative. Eventually, it will be placed at buildings and structures along a 67-mile stretch of L.A. County beaches. This technology will definitely not only help this beach, but all beaches throughout the world. I think this is going to be the genesis of a new way to identify hazards for the hard of hearing on beaches. With testing completed, the system will go live this November with signage that explains various light signals and instructions for each type of incident. The water is the best we have in California, so it's good that it's available to everyone and they feel safe and protected. Safe to enjoy the surf, sand and sun for all it has to offer. For Torn City Cable, I'm Colleen Farrell. Thanks, Colleen. With the system's November rollout, the county and city of Torrance will host a special day at the beach for members of the hearing impaired community. A unique one-day event brought fans to the Super Dimension Convention at the Torrance Cultural Arts Center recently. Taking place in Torrance for the third year in a row, this was the largest gathering of Mac Cross fans in North America. The annual event celebrated all things Mac Cross, a Japanese science fiction anime. From the original 1980 series and film to subsequent sequels, video game spin-offs, toys, cosplay, and much more. It's also a place for fans to check out rare collectibles and meet a few of their favorite actors. Jason Klein, chief convention director, was happy to showcase something like this in the Torrance community. Torrance, I believe, has one of the largest uh, populations of, of Japanese Americans in the United States, aside from Hawaii. It has a home here, but also this venue, is just, it's a great venue. The people here are, are excellent. The Torrance Cultural Arts Center is just a wonderful place. So we, we really appreciate everything that they do for us. This is my third year in a row. Uh, I come out because this community, like the Macross community, is very tight-knit and online, so a lot of us have known each other for decades. So this is my yearly vacation. I come out to L.A. and get to hang out with all my friends. Enthusiasts of the series, like Sarah De La Pena, traveled from Buffalo, New York, to be part of this event. Mac Cross superfans were able to purchase exclusive items not found in the U.S., grab some food, and watch live performances as well. While the event is fairly new to Torrance, fans have been attending the Super Dimension Convention for nearly two decades. To learn more, be sure to check out their website. The Torch Police Department received a large grant to take steps to reduce deaths and injuries on California roads. A $175,000 grant was awarded to the department by the California Office of Traffic Safety for a one-year enforcement and education program. The money will fund various activities and programs. Few of these include checkpoints, focused patrols on hands-free cell phone law, 
combating influenced drivers and seatbelt safety, to name just a few. Torrance police also plan to train officers on how to identify suspected impaired drivers and conduct sobriety tests. Officials say they will also create hot sheets identifying repeat DUI offenders. The grant is for the 2020 federal fiscal year. Well, the city of Torrance hosted an animal clinic bringing local pet owners to Wilson Park. City Cable reporter Jocelyn Ortega was there and has the story. Residents from all over the South Bay lined up with their pets at the City of Torrance Animal Control to receive treatment from friendly vet volunteers for low cost. My dog is Bruno and I brought him here because I don't want him to get sick. In attendance were medical volunteers, Torrance City Police officers and animal control officers. Services included vaccination, microchipping and license applications and renewals, all at a discount price. One pet owner brought in his new puppy, Mia, for her first round of vaccinations and says he is grateful for the clinic's efforts. Personally, like, I don't know of any affordable, you know, um, animal services, so this really helped me because it was local and it was affordable. Microchipping and licensing can help clinics and animal control track lost pets. Well, we do catch a lot of dogs that are out, and it's very beneficial if we can ID that dog so we can return it home. Vaccinations help prevent the spread of diseases, which can be detrimental to animal and human health. Some of the most common risks include rabies, influenza, lepto, parasites, and typhus, which are contracted through contact with unvaccinated animals and can cause harm to humans. Given the recent outbreak of typhus in downtown Los Angeles, it is important for pet owners now more than ever to get their animals treated. Services like x-rays, blood work, and treatment for more serious illnesses are not offered by the clinics, and the doctors do advise pet owners to contact their veterinarians regularly. It is for their health. Uh, the old saying of ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So this is preventative to protect them against the diseases that are out there. These clinics are offered regularly and are a convenient and cost-effective way to keep your pets safe and healthy. From Torrance City Cable, I'm Jocelyn Ortega. Thanks, Jocelyn. For more information on services and upcoming events, you can contact the City of Torrance Animal Control at 310-618-3850 or check out the information available online at torrentca.gov. Four local businesses were nominated by the city for their impact in the community. The city's economic development department submitted the names of four family-owned businesses to the Los Angeles Business Journal for their most influential award. Those businesses included the Torrance Bakery, Blue Stem Hotel, Smog City Brewery, and Sage Millimeter. The goal of nominating these businesses is to show appreciation for our family-owned businesses and their contributions to the community and the impact they have on the business landscape and economic growth of Southern California. More businesses will get nominated from Torrance for another award in the category of fashion and beauty. Stay tuned for information on who gets the nomination. Well, a popular clothing chain filed for bankruptcy recently, putting more than 40 stores in California in danger of closing. Forever 21 recently issued a list of 178 stores throughout the United States in its U.S. bankruptcy court filings as possible closures. Among those included 26 stores in Southern California. As of now, the Torrance location at Delamo Fashion Center is not on that list. The Los Angeles Virtuosi Orchestra is partnering with the local high school for a unique fundraising opportunity. Reporter Colleen Farrell tells us more. Maestro Carlo Ponti is no stranger to patience in the pursuit of musical excellence. As the founder and conductor of the Los Angeles Virtuosi Orchestra, he works regularly to integrate local student ensembles into the orchestra's performances. It provides young aspiring musicians the opportunity to learn from the world-renowned conductor as they gain exposure to some of the most demanding choral masterpieces such as Antonio Vivaldi's The Gloria.
Because of its transparency, every part has to be uh, learned very well, and so there is no place to hide, if you will. So it's very, it will really attest to the students' work uh, for this performance. Because of the strong reputation of West High's music and arts programs, LA Virtuosi selected the school's elite choral group, the Aristocracy, to join the orchestra in performing the famous piece. Ponty, the students, and West High's choral director, Antone Rodich, are working tirelessly to prepare for the October 17th performance at the school's recently opened Performing Arts Center. Working with Carlo was definitely more intense since he is more disciplined, but um, I think it's definitely beneficial for our choir. We've learned a lot of different techniques when it comes to singing and the fact that it's in a different language. It's been such a huge challenge for my students, but they are loving every minute of it. Members of the West High Choir are hoping to fill the seats here at the Performing Arts Center. Income from the upcoming performance will support the study of music. The benefits imparted by music education are countless. You know, it teaches cooperation, self-esteem, communication, discipline. Ponte's founding mission of the organization is to support music education through collaborative partnerships with the community, schools, and other arts organizations. Music programs are currently not funded by district budgets. It's also Ponte's goal to inspire youth to consider a musical career after high school. They're unbelievable. They've worked so hard already, and I'm very proud of them. They have a great sound, beautiful sound, and beautiful intonation. So I think it will be a great performance. From what Ponte has observed, it's a career that's well within these students' reach to achieve. For Torn City Cable, I'm Colleen Farrell. Thanks, Colleen. Be sure to catch the performance on Thursday, October 17th from 7 p.m. to 8.15 p.m. at West High School. You can purchase tickets online. For more information, go to West High's website at TUSD.org slash schools slash West High School. Students across the Torrance Unified School District took to the challenge of building and racing boats all made out of cardboard, duct tape, and creativity. Reporter Nicole Salvatierra takes us to the district's aquatic center where female students dive into the field of STEM at the third annual Cardboard Regatta. Testing their knowledge of physics and engineering, Torrance Unified middle and high schoolers created boats sturdy enough to sail with two team members inside. Torrance High science teacher, Natsia Rashid, and her colleague, Nancy Tan, created the event to combat the underrepresentation of women in the STEM field. We wanted a way to empower these young women to pursue STEM and went into teaching and I w kept talking to female students and kept encouraging them to pursue science and not to let anyone else stop them from pursuing their dreams of science or engineering or math or technology. According to the National Science Foundation, women make up 28% of workers in science and engineering. Projects like the Cardboard Regatta make science engaging and approachable. Jasmina Lafayette has worked at the Torrance Refinery for seven years. She and other female representatives provided guidance to the girls throughout the event. We do understand there is a great need for more female, you know, engineers, for more people to be part in, not just in our industry, but in all of the industries to, be, to have a seat at the table um, and really make a contribution. The engineers offered advice and words of wisdom to the girls during a poolside question and answer session. Something that I found to be beneficial is to really be a team player. The panel emphasized the importance of communication and doing well in school. After two hours and 15 minutes of construction, the girls must put their engineering skills to the test in the sink or swim competition. And this year, the girls must face additional challenges. This year, the timer starts while the boats are still on the pool deck. Once they touched the water, the girls determined how well they held up. Ella DeFranco and Alana Morales were the first team to cross the finish line during the middle school competition. For Ella, she enjoys a hands-on approach to science. I just really like science, and I thought it's really kind of cool to build stuff. Like, I don't, my brother's the one with all the Legos, but when I can, I do like to build with them. Alana's father is an engineer at the Torrance Refinery and motivates her to be involved in STEM. He is um, always encouraging me and like my um, woman cousins to um, get more into it because there's not a lot of girls into it today. Not only in girls, but for all students. I'm Nicole Salvatierra for This Week in Torrance.
Thanks, Nicole. While the field of STEM is still predominantly male, women are becoming more involved. Since 2012, the Society of Women Engineers reported a 58% increase in engineering and computer science degrees. Well, a local middle school teacher was honored with a Teacher of the Year distinction by the Los Angeles County Office of Education. Sarah Honeycutt brings us the story. And watch your positives and negatives. Megan Wareham began teaching math at Hull Middle School 14 years ago and has been dedicated to her students ever since. Now it hurts. Growing up, Wareham says she always knew she wanted to be a teacher. She grew up with siblings who seemed to understand math right away. But she struggled. She wants her students to know that even if you are struggling or feel like you have to work harder, it is still possible to be good at math. Um, my big thing is that growth mindset, that it's really okay to make mistakes. And it's part of because as I grew up, I had to learn that. Um, so as we're moving on to these kids to high school, I really want them to know that mistakes are okay. And really making sure that it, they know that they can do this, they can try again and try again. And, and I'm here to support them. Wareham says her priority is developing a meaningful relationship with each student. Through her commitment and compassion, students like 8th grader Jensen Ward look forward to her class, feel comfortable asking questions, and enjoy working together. Sometimes when I see her in the morning, I'll smile, and I don't even notice that I'm smiling, but it's just because I'm happy or excited to go to that class. She just makes us feel like we're very safe and that if we say an answer and we get it wrong, we're not going to get made fun of. We're just going to learn from our mistakes. We're not going to be held back from that. Wareham has created an impact inside and outside of the classroom. She has taken on a number of other roles, including teacher leader for the math department, department chairperson, student council advisor, math team advisor for Hull and TUSD, Relay for Life chairperson, achievement committee for students, and co-coordinator of the TUSD Math Field Day. It's no surprise Wareham was chosen to represent the district at the LACOE Teacher of the Year program and selected as one of the top 16 Teachers of the Year. Wareham says her classroom is a place where math is possible, no matter how you feel about the subject. She has created a fun and inviting space that makes students excited to learn. She feels honored and humbled to be named Teacher of the Year. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Sarah Honeycutt. Thanks, Sarah. Well, before we go, we have a few events to tell you all about. Torrance Mayor Patrick Fury takes the stage to present his 2019 State of the City Address held at the Doubletree by Hilton in Torrance. The luncheon takes place on Thursday, October 17th at 11.30 a.m. This event is sponsored by the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce and invites not only the business community but Torrance residents as well. Tickets are $48 per person. You can purchase them online at thetorrancechamber.com or call the Torrance Chamber's offices at 310-540-5858. Now, this event has sold out in the past, past year, so be sure to get your tickets now. Then the Torrance Women's Club is hosting its fall fundraiser on Saturday, October 19th from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. Come enjoy music and dance at the Senior Social this takes place at the Torrance Women's Club at 1422 Ingratia Avenue in downtown Torrance. Tickets to $35 per person and benefits the South Bay Village. To get your tickets, call 310-533-9116. And if you're looking for a fun place to celebrate the fall season, head down to Tagavi Farm Pumpkin Patch located at Delamo Fashion Center. Fresh quality pumpkins are available for picking along with fun activities. You can find them at 21800 Hawthorne Boulevard. Well, that does it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.